lately there have been monks that are up country in the jungles in the mountains of Thailand and some of them have asked someone to tell me and some have sent me letters saying that they've been practicing for a very long time, 20 years, even been a monk longer than I have. And they said that they wasted a lot of time trying to do me meditation, making their minds peaceful, but the mind just won't get peaceful. And people have given them books and YouTube videos of mine and now they can practice Dhamma well. I am a student of forest monks, jungle monks from Thailand, Lungpu Te, Lung Man, Lungpu Suat. Lungpu Man was the teacher of my teacher. Lungpu Suat was a student of Lungpu Wen. But I learned from a lot of these great masters from the forest tradition. And when they would teach, it really hit you and penetrated the heart. Most teachers, masters in Thailand, they teach about generosity, charity, and morality. But it'll be a very seldom rare experience when they get the opportunity to teach real Dhamma just to the odd practitioner that comes in. When I was young, Lung Pa Li taught me how to practice meditation when I was seven and I was able to do it. I did it every day. When we're practicing Dhamma, we just have to stay in the four foundations of mindfulness, being mindful of body, feelings, the mind, or Dhammas. My teacher uh, taught me to watch my mind, and then if we're able to see our mind, then the rest of the practice won't be too hard, seeing our own mind. Lung Pu Man taught that if you achieve the mind, you achieve Dhamma, without studying one's own mind. We don't achieve Dhamma, see the Dhamma. There are a lot of uh, people that have complained, why do I teach watching the mind? You should teach watching the body first. Uh, usually it's actually uh, yogis or practitioners that say that. We any of the four foundations of mindfulness we have to watch but or be mindful of, but in order to see them, we need to have the correct type of samadhi. So we have to study the mind and have the right quality of mind, correct samadhi. Then we're not going to be able to see the three characteristics. So when Achan Man said, if we don't achieve the mind, we don't achieve Dhamma, he's 100% correct. We have to have the mind that has the right quality. We have to practice mental training. There are the threefold training. The first one is moral training. And then we have to do mental training and then wisdom training. The second one is the mental training, jitta sika. 
ก็อยู่ในแง่ของเที่ยวเสียสุดท้ายที่จิตสุดท้ายที่ปัญญาสุดท้ายที่มันยุ่งเรื่องสิ่งสมาธิปัญญาให้ทำเป็นเรื่องสิ่งสมาธิปัญญา are taught to practice the threefold training But a lot of people haven't studied this topic of having the right mind or the right mental training, because without it, we can't really achieve wisdom. We can't throw away that training. In order to have wisdom training, we need to have correct samadhi. So this mental training out of the threefold training is about preparing the mind correctly in order to practice wisdom. And the wisdom training is about developing wisdom and seeing the truth. But we need samadhi first. We need to find um, a meditation object that we're decent at observing, whether it be the abdomen rising and falling, the breathing, or budo, budo, and then understand the principles. So we budo, we do that to see the behavior of our mind. We breathe, we do that to see the behavior of our mind, or moving our arm, the mind moves to think, no so. Whatever position the hand or is in, no so. The mind over focuses and is still at the hand, then we know so. Right? There are only two things that we really need to learn. One is the mind moving out, getting lost, and the one is moving into focus. We have to learn those two states and come to recognize them. A lot of the time, when they talked about the threefold training, people didn't really know the how to train in these things. Especially the mental training. When I talk to the masters and uh, all the famous masters that I've spoken to, they all say that I teach completely correctly. The only thing that I teach incorrectly is I say that it's easy. <laughs> Actually, it isn't easy. Some of them disagree with me. Yeah, because a lot of the great masters, they look at the faces of the lay people that come to him and say, "Oh, these are going to be hard to teach." So when they see it's too hard for some people, they'll say, "Okay, practice achieving merit and do charity and be moral." They are ha the people are happy to just. Um, bow to the teachers and pay their respects and be with them. But when I would go to these teachers, they would teach me true dhamma, and it's not because I'm any smarter than any of you. It's just that I wouldn't stop practicing from morning to night every day. Even when I was only taught how to meditate when I was young, I would meditate every day. No exceptions. And then when I learned how to watch the mind, I would watch the mind all day. No exceptions. Every day. So we have to be diligent and we have to be uh, perseverant. We have to keep the five precepts. We have to practice formal meditation every day. If we like Udo, then. We have to budo and then be aware of ourselves. Budo and then the mind overfocuses. We know budo and the mind gets lost in other thoughts. We know. Same applies to if we choose the breath. If the mind overfocuses on the breath, we know so. The mind goes out to think, we know so. 
will have the mind that is truly aware arise when we see the mind that goes out to think or, or gets lost. Then we will be able to achieve correct samadhi, the mind that is truly awake and aware, the mind that is with ourselves. And then once we achieve that mind, the correct samadhi, then we're able to watch the body and mind working. Let's watch the body and mind working. But mostly all that we do is get lost in thought or pull in and, and hold focus. Sometimes when we get lost in our thoughts, that's a fabrication, a formation and it's considered an unwholesome formation. It's, defi it's defilement working. And then when we're trying not to get lost in thoughts, it's also a fabrication, but it's a more wholesome fabrication where we're trying to be good, we're trying not to be defiled. But they're both fabrications. So what do we get or achieve from a mind that is lost in thought following the defilements? We get suffering. The, uh, there's a great opportunity of uh, being reborn in suffering realms. If we hold and practice focusing type concentration only, uh, then we are good people, wholesome people trying to control ourselves and be good and in that case our future lifetimes could be a human again a angel or a godly being some people talk about okay so it's about non-attachment okay i won't attach to anything good bad uh, our, our equivalent states i don't attach to anything but this isn't uh, a correct practice because it's just an attitude it's being attached to not attaching the buddha dasa one of the great masters said that there shouldn't be there uh, achieving the true nirvana or enlightened state is no attachment to anything. And then people would make the mistake of then saying, okay, I'm not going to attach to anything without doing the practice of the three training and reaching fruition in morality, fruition in samadhi, fruition in wisdom from practice. Instead, they just decide, okay, I'm not going to attach to anything, just let everything go. Right. In that case, it can be very dangerous, right? We can not have morality. We can just steal things from anybody or uh, cheat on our wives or husbands because well, we don't, we don't uh, attach to anything, don't hold anything. Right? We'll end up doing unwholesome acts. Yeah, let's not be impressed with people that say that they don't attach to anything. There isn't anything wholesome about that. Some people, there's even a monk that has a whole school in Thailand that says, oh, it's about non-attachment, and then everybody practices trying to not attach without doing the work. It's quite dangerous. So we have to see that when we say we're not attached to anything, not attached to anything, we're actually attached to the thought and the idea that we're not going to attach to anything. So there's still attachment there. There's a, a story at the Buddha's time with a, 
a person with really long finger nails at a place in uh, northern India or Nepal who can actually still go visit that area today. There was a cave where Prasaribhut, a Sariputta, disciple of the Buddha, meditated. And this guy with the long nails went to visit Sariputta. And he said, he said that we shouldn't be attached to anything, this guy with the nails said, and Sariputta was in the cave and he was fanning the Buddha. It was hot season. <laughs> the Buddha talked about the truth of non-attachment and taught Sariputta uh, about seeing the three characteristics of the feelings and Sariputta achieved arahanship. The guy with the nails, I'm not so sure. So this non-attachment idea is a wrong view to just say I'm not attached and try to apply that. There are more wrong views like the view of annihilation, that when we die that there's nothing, just darkness. The body isn't us. We can see with correct samadhi that the body is not us. We see the body there is not us. We see the feelings is not us. The, all the fabrications is not us. Even the mind itself that is able to see these things is also not us. One moment it's the aware mind with samadhi, the next moment it's lost in thought. We can't order it to be any particular way. It's not under anybody's power to command or control. So all five aggregates, the mind is that fifth aggregate consciousness that he's referring to. Whichever aggregate we take a look at, whether it be body, feelings, perceptions, mental formations, or consciousness, we look and study them, and none of them present as a self. Even physical pain is not the body. It's something that the mind can see, and it's something other than the body. We can't control it. When there's a lot of pain, the heart gets irritated. We can see that that irritation isn't us either. If we have the right mental training, correct samadhi, and then when we see these things clearly, then it'll come back to the mind itself, seeing that the mind itself is uncontrollable, impermanent, not a self moving from one thing to another. Let's try to order our mind. Don't think. Let's not think right now. Will it follow the orders? No. It thinks, right? So just see the truth of the world we really are. See that it isn't us. We can't 
it won't follow our orders and we'll see that whatever uh, arises phenomenon arises falls away and when we truly accept that uh, the mind accepts that it becomes a stream enterer A lot of us are can do this. It's not that hard. <laughs> 